Malcolm had gone soft. Or, at some point in the last few centuries, nature had become intentionally vexing. Humbled by a cloud of irritating gnats and littered in mosquito bites, the Marquess of Reedholm realised with a sigh he'd lost the edge that once made the deep, dark woods feel mysterious and exciting. With a curse, he slapped another buzzing pest off his cravat, certain that he was well on his way to transforming into a fey dandy. Before he knew it, he'd be piercing his pointed ears and adding shiny decorations to the antlers that curved back from his crown, like the fledglings were famous for. Battling with temperamental horses and then wading through muddy forest was not at all how Malcolm had imagined his day going. He had hoped it would start out like it usually did, with plenty of wine and women to drown his sorrows in. Revelry to keep the boredom at bay. Instead, a long meeting with his estate manager had interrupted his breakfast, followed by a list of complaints from his tenants, each just as irksome as the incessant insects. He couldn't afford to ignore their complaints this time, not with whispers of revolt coming in from the Baron Dagron's country estate next door, and a command from the King of Night to keep the peace. Disquiet was a contagious force. Malcolm needed to control the spread. Obey the king he would, even if it meant tramping through the woods like a lumberman to settle a squabble he wanted no part of between skittish tenant farmers and some fey woman. His pale skin gleamed in the humidity stirred up by late summer air and the rush of the nearby river. Harrow, one of his land stewards, led him through thick undergrowth, pushing toward the nearest clearing. Malcolm's tail, Long and limber with a tuft of black hair on the end, like that of a lion's, flicked irritably from side to side. The persistent swarm of gnats rose to avoid the strike, buzzing instead around his tall ears. Her home isn't far now, my lord, Harrow said. The man had lined skin that had gone leathery under too much sunlight. I apologize for the horses. They'd passed a circle of ancient tombstones earlier. The horses wouldn't travel beyond them. Don't stress over the beasts, Malcolm grunted, scratching at the fresh bite on his forearm. The horses would rather not be here. I can relate. Malcolm wasn't dressed for the excursion in his brightly coloured waistcoat and silk cravat. Harrow had described the outing as light and short, so Malcolm hadn't changed. But if this was a light hike, he'd eat his boots. The horses are afraid of her too, my lord. Harrow warned with the quiet reverence of a man reciting a prayer. She's got the entire estate terrified. Humans and beasts alike. Scared of one woman, Malcolm scoffed. He'd witnessed women like his mother, may she walk the stars in eternal peace, do a great many things.